गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग डिस्कसिंग द टॉपिक ऑफ द ह्यूमन रिप्रोडक्शन ह्यूमन रिप्रोडक्शन सो वी नो दैट रिप्रोडक्शन व्हाट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन रिप्रोडक्शन so here is the producing of an egg ones the producing of a producing of n ones n ones of the of the same kind same kind is called as a reproduction so here that means we are producing of the same kind of same type of a species are producing example if we take a place a cat will produce cat will produce cats dogs will produce dogs likewise the humans will produce the humans only so here the same type of a species are producing then we can say as a reproduction here the same kind is very important why means we are producing of an n ones means we cannot say as a reproduction why means here the cats will not produce the dogs the dogs cannot produce the cats likewise here the cats will produce the cats only dogs will produce the dogs only so same type of a species will producing the the same type of or the same kind of species are producing so here it is called as a reproduction so here in a reproduction we know that it is the one of the an important the characteristic feature of a living organisms why it is a very important a characteristic feature means here it helpful for the continuity of a species here it shows the a continuity continuity of a species from from generation to a generation generation to a generation so here here it plays a very important role in a a living organism why means we are without a reproduction here the species continuity will not be taken in place so the species should transfer from a generation to generation that means to continue their race or a family history they should take a family history they continue their race from generation to a generation and here the compulsory here it requires the process called as a reproduction so here it is we can call as a physiological process where compulsory it is needed by means at the end of their life span each species will having a life span will be present in the life span is present in so at the end of their life span here the species have to continue their species that means for generation to generation they have to produce so when they produce the species from generation to generation here the species will go continuously will go of their race so that here a reproduction is the one of the an important a characteristic a feature that they can place in a living organism now coming to the a human reproduction so here human reproduction humans all the know that the humans are the sexually reproducing organism these are the sexually reproducing organism and also we will show that the baby parents and also shows that the sexual dimorphism so here the humans are sexually reproducing sexually reproducing means here the gametes are presenting the gametes are in the presence of gametes in the presence of in the presence of gametes in the presence of gametes 
reproduction. So here the human she shows uh, the sexual reproduction having uh, the gametes are presenting. The gametes which are presenting, uh, these gametes are produced from the agonauts. These are produced from the agonauts. Are gonads are we can call them as uh, the sex organs. Sex organs are primary sex organs also. From the sex organs, here it helpful for producing of the sex cells are presenting. The sex cells we can call them as a gametes. So in the presence of gametes, here hormones are produced in the male containing the male gametes, the female containing the female gametes. Here male gametes we can call as the sperms. So sperms are the male gametes, the male and the female. Female gametes are the egg or ova. Egg or ova are ovum. So here these are the egg we are having these sperms and eggs of the gametes. So here in the presence of gametes the reproduction will be taken place. So humans we can call as the sexually reproducing an organisms. And the second one I will be parents. Here the human shows a heavy bee parents. Heavy parents means here directly they produce the ones. If directly they produce, they produce and ones produce and ones. Directly if they produce and egg ones are called as are called as a heavy bee parents. That means directly. Here in humans the fertilization is the internal fertilization. When internal fertilization is taking place, the development is taking place inside the and uterus region. Or in the uterus, in the uterus or womb, womb of the mother. Here in the womb of the mother or uterus, here the development is taking place after nine months. After nine months, that is. After a two seventy days, here the deliberation of a baby is taken place. So directly we are able to produce an egg once, so that we can call them as a baby carers. And also the second third one here it shows the sexual dimorphism. Here it shows that the sexual dimorphism. Here third one it shows that. The sexual dimorphism, sexual dimorphism. Here, what is the sexual dimorphism? Means uh, by seeing, uh, by seeing external characters, by seeing uh, an external characters, by seeing external characters, we can identify. We can. Uh, Identify the male and the male and the female. We can identify the male and female so that we can call this as the sexual dimorphism. So that means by seeing external characters, the male and female, we can easily identify. So we can show that in humans we show a clear picture of a sexual dimorphism. By seeing external characters, we can differentiate which is a male organism and which is a female organism. So the differentiating of a male and female by seeing an external characters, so we can call this as the sexual dimorphism. This sexual dimorphism we can see firstly in a firstly, firstly we can see in an an ascii helminthi. Ascaris. 
where we, have, we can see the ascaris by seeing a, a male and a, a female. The males are very short in structure and they are does not show skulls. But in females, they are longer in structure and shows a columbi nature so that with the help of these external characters, we can easily differentiate the male and a female and organism so that we can call as a sexual dimorphism. And also here through the sexual dimorphism, humans will show that a dioecious, a dioecious organism that is male, both male and female are, they are separately, the gametes are separately, they are presenting so that we can call this as a, a dioecious and organisms. Next, coming to the a basic phases of a physiology of a reproduction. Here, in this, there are different a basic physiology, that is basic concepts of presenting, so we can call them as we can say as the first one we can call as the gametogenesis 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 and second one is called as the insemination insemination and the third one we can call as the, the fertilization 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 to the a blastocyst sorry third one fourth one is a fertilization fourth one is a cleavage cleavage fifth one a gastrulation a gastrulation and the sixth one will show that a an implantation, implantation, later we show that an organogenesis, organogenesis, or we can use a morphogenesis, and the eighth one we show that a placentation, placentation, and lastly we show that the Parturation. We show that the departuration. So these are the uh, several uh, sequential uh, steps where it takes place uh, in a uh, basic uh, physiology of a uh, reproduction. That is uh, one way can call as gametogenesis, second one we can call as insemination, third one. So these are the uh, several uh, sequential uh, steps where uh, it takes place uh, in an uh, human uh, uh, reproductive uh, system. So here it shows uh, the, the basic phases of uh, the reproduction, basic reproduction.